Real JP Multimedia, proud sponsor of the Nerdball Podcast. Here to help you with all things audio, video, graphics, photo, web design. From weddings to real estate, commercial business to private use, we offer a big variety of services for almost any budget. And if we can't do it, we will find someone who can. Find us at realjp.com. That's R E E L J P.com. Real JP Multimedia. I am Lorenzo Melcher. These are some dudes, and this is the Nerdball Podcast. This is the Nerdball Podcast with Lorenzo Melcher. In the history of my podcast, I've never had to say that. It's always my guests. But this one is special. This is the, as Jimmy said, right before we started, the crossover event everyone has been waiting for. <laughs> uh, this is Dads on the Nerdball Podcast. Uh, thanks for coming on the Nerdball Podcast, guys. My pleasure. Thanks Glad for be here. having us. Yeah. <laughs> Re- reoccurring guests. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we were uh, we were supposed to tech or uh, podcast on Tuesday because we were going to talk about the Guardians making the playoffs. Uh, and then I got a terrible headache and uh, had to cancel. And I think Jimmy made fun of me. So I wasn't going to be able to make it anyway. Yeah, Jim, who I wasn't even going to be able to make the podcast time and he was making fun of you. But he was probably secretively excited about that, that you got a headache because now he can join on. He knew. Yeah, now, now he's all part of it, and Adam is not anymore. So, yeah, I did send him a, a link, but he has fourteen children over there, so I highly doubt he'll. he'll I, was, I, was, I was like, I was about to make a daycare joke, and I was just like, yeah, I won't do that. When he told us, <laughs> like, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, first thing on on uh, tap here is I really first of all I, I appreciate. Uh, when we're on the dad podcast, when we talk about Perrysburg football, because obviously I'm part of that. You guys are part of that. You were um, football players. Um, gigantic win on Friday. The, the the craziest, like 6,000 people were at the stadium and it was insane. Dude, it literally said it was sold out. Like yes. they weren't even accepting walk-in tickets anymore. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that was possible for a high school football game. I really didn't. Not <laughs> well, at least not in Northwest Ohio. Yeah. I'm assuming it has to do with fire codes and all that fire kind of stuff, code, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Which, it was... That's always I, a natural place for fire is metal metal seats and you just people everywhere and grass. Well, you have to be ready. You never know. I beg to differ. <laughs> we, can get, we can cover that in the next episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> fire codes. Write that that's one a, down. That's definitely a dad thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, it was... Uh, I mean, we were there. We were warming up at you know an hour before the game, and can we just can we stop real quick and talk about how you're an athlete and you didn't fall when you were running down into the pit? Dude, I, was, I, I, I my eyes were fixed on you during that little clip. <laughs> I thought you were going down for sure. Uh, so the whole time, and and one of my friends even said like uh, like I'm an athlete. I didn't fall. He goes, yeah, but you were you were thinking about it the entire time. I said, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. I was. And it probably would have been worse if I knew the camera was there, but I didn't even see the camera. Yeah. So for the listeners, Anthony Wayne football field, for some reason, there's like when you're entering the field, it like goes down. What would you say? It's like five, six feet. Yeah. And it's like like a little mini hill, which when I saw that video, I was like, dude, they still haven't taken that out in like the age that we're in of player safety. It would just surprise me that they haven't like fixed the whole The whole field is in a bowl. So yeah, it, the home side does that, and the when you come in from the away side does. I that know. Too. I'm just saying. I, I was surprised <clears throat> they haven't fixed it yet, just because like I, everywhere it seems like player safety, player safety, and you would think that they would take out the little hill. But I did. It was when I watched that video. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that hill was even there. I remember running into that bowl several times. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But so yeah, I <laughs> I did not fall. Um, I don't know if I looked cool. I I looked like to me, I looked like an old man trying not to fall. <laughs> But you didn't fall and you didn't trip, stumble, nothing. Yeah, like it was that's, clean. 
So, yeah. so game game day. Are you like cleats? Do you go like t- track shoe, like turf shoes? Like, what's kind of the coaching attire there? Uh, for me personally, I always wear the same shoes. I have some black uh, New Balance, all black New Balance that I wear. Um, I did change up the pants this year for the first time in like three seasons. I I used to go khakis. Now I found uh, I got some black Under Armour like golf pants. I guess. Um, nice. so I changed up my pants, but, uh, yeah, I always, I always wear the same things. Uh, those shoes, I got to get rid of them after this season because they do not, there is no support left in them whatsoever. They look nice because I only wear them on Fridays and on the turf, so they don't get dirty. Uh, but there's zero support. <laughs> My feet have never been flatter in those shoes. <laughs> um, but that's more superstitious for me than anything. Like I got to wear these things all the time. Otherwise, yeah. the world will explode. So, so a huge win, though. I mean, dude, uh, was, yeah, that uh, was a crazy game, dude. It was really good. We we I think they said we scored on seven of our nine possessions. Um, hit a forty one yard hit a forty one yard field goal, which uh, when our coach called for a field goal unit to come out, like no hesitation, and I was like, wait, how far? How far is this? Like, I would have asked that question first, and he just, you know, field goal, get out there, booted it. It was nice. Uh, Probably would have been good from 43. (laughs) So, (laughs) humble brag. It was, uh, it was awesome. So, yeah, we, we come out. Um, the, the game was so frustrating because we come out, we score. Uh, they come out and score in three plays or four plays. Um, Dude, there were several plays too where it was just like it looked like the dude was completely wrapped up yeah. in the backfield and yeah. then all of a sudden he like it was just a mass of bodies and he would just be at the bottom and then pop out and go for like 60 and I was like, yeah oh, shit. so that that would have yeah it was the second half at halftime was 10 7 we scored and then one play they scored like 60 or 70 yard run then we scored a uh you know eight nine play drive then they had one play and they scored on a 60 70 yard run and it's so it's it the feeling you get like all right we're up by 10 and then immediately up by three it's mm-hmm. so hard to like manage your emotions and our co- coach our head coach Dirk does a really good job of that like he's he uh and he's a head coach that's what he he should be able to do that but he he does a real good job uh coach Kriegel is real good at it it's just staying at one level you know yeah. you can be excited go up like one notch to be excited but then temper that a little bit. The same thing when when they would score, like he would stay at that level to keep everyone, you know, everyone's looking at him. Like, how are you going to react to this, right? Yeah. So, uh, but it, like the feeling I have inside is like, oh, how is this going to happen? I even <laughs> I went to go get some water from Mateo and the other water boys, and under my breath, I'm like, how the fuck did that happen? And then the next day, <laughs> my Lillian goes, Dad said the f word, and I looked at Mateo. He just smiling. <laughs> so in in your head during the game are you ever like obviously like i I didn't watch the game but i was following it along like it definitely seemed like you guys were doing a lot more like long drives and obviously like in your head you're like okay we can clearly move the ball on these guys Mm -hmm. and to your point it was just like big play after big play on their end but in your head is it just like as long as we're up by at least three like we know we're going to push the ball and still score and like in your head, like it's never in doubt. Like, oh shit! Like we're gonna lose this game because we we built up that just little bit of a cushion, but we know we can continuously move. Or do were you like once they hit that second big play in a row? Are you just kind of like, oh shit! Like if we don't like if if we don't move the ball, if, like did it ever get to the point where you're just like, okay, the pressure's clearly on us, or was it always just like? We're rolling this game like they're not going to be able to stop us. Uh, well, <clears throat> they had a good defense, right? Before they have yeah. that game. Their defense they, was better than their offense should have been, right? They only has they only gave up forty one points the entire season. Yeah, uh, okay, but that's it. but yeah, so so the field goal to me the field goal was huge because I think having that three point lead when they would score a touchdown after we scored a touchdown was nice because I think there's a huge difference in not obviously three points doesn't seem like a lot but it's like morale wise like all right well we're still winning and you're right Jim like we felt we can move the ball on these guys and I think we felt that going into the game too like 
Like we we shouldn't have our offense is good enough where we can move the ball. And we did. We didn't punt all night. I think we we uh we had a fourth down that we didn't get. Um but and and for them too, it was only the big plays. <clears throat> they scored um they, 21 of their points were off three three plays that probably that was well over 200 yards. Uh, three big plays, and then their last drive where they scored with five seconds left. It didn't matter. Uh, they were yeah. helped out helped out by some pass interference penalties. Um, but so we knew like they can't throw. Uh, everybody knows that in the state of Ohio. If you ever look at Anthony Wayne film, that they 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 don't want to, and they didn't they didn't have to uh, for some of those games or for some of those drives. And then when they did, you know, their first drive coming out of half, there was like third and thirteen. Their quarterback was going to get sacked, and he just chucked it up, and it was just for anybody and our safety intercepted it. And that was a huge play for us to, they got the ball to start the second half and then have a turnover was gigantic. But I always felt, I mean, you always feel any game, uh, unless you're winning by 40, you always feel like, okay, this, this, uh, this could turn on us. So we got to keep doing what we're doing. And um, you know, we can't obviously as offensive coach, I can't help the defense. So we got to watch them and, and we got to just keep scoring the ball. Uh, it makes it even more like in your mind because two years in a row or yeah, St. John's game last year and a St. John's game this year, like we were up and then they came back. So we know like it could turn in a heartbeat. So we just got to keep chugging along. Yeah. So like, and I, and I know Anthony Wayne's defense was like what got them there this season, like going into the game. I know like you feel confident in like what you're doing and everything else, but there's got to be, I'm sure in their mind too, they're like, Hey, our defense is going to stop us. Is there, was there a point like right at the beginning of the game where you're like, all right, we're like, we move like, was it the first couple plays where you're just like, all right, we, we can move it on these I guys. The, I think or, it was the whole, whole first drive. I mean, obviously we have a game plan going in, like, we're going to try to attack these people or we're going to use these plays or their linebackers do this. So we got to, you know, do certain things. Um, the frustrating part, and I've, it's, it's happened. Uh, I think it's happened a few times the last few years is like, we have a game plan and then it, we, we try to use it and it's not working. And like, okay, well we got to scrap that and, and come up with something else. But our game plan this, this week was really worked really well. And after that first drive, like, okay, well we, they may stop us, but we we can move the ball on them. Um, and then uh, what helps is being so balanced. And it was amazing how balanced we were. I don't know if you guys saw the stats, but we had like 400, over 400 yards offense, almost exactly the same rushing and passing. And then our passing, uh, let's see, four people. Five people caught passes. Uh, one had five, one had four, one had four, uh, another one had four, and then our tight end had one. So, like, being able to spread yeah. the ball around, too, is, like, they can't just say, hey, guard that one person. Or if they do, like, hey, uh, they're going to shut down that person while well, we still got other people that can catch the ball. Or I think in the case of, I think BG, was it BG, did a pretty good job initially of stopping our run. Uh, and that's what they, they just made their mind. You could tell like, Hey, we're going to stop Connor wall and Zach, or at least attempt to. And if they pass it, they pass it. And, but we were able to pass it that game too. So knowing that first drive was important and, in any game, if, especially if you start the game with the ball, uh, if you can go down and score, then you feel pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, congrats. <laughs> huge victory. Yeah, dude, it was. It was awesome. It vaulted us into number four in the playoff rankings, which if we stay there, it gets us two home playoff games uh, oh. since they since they changed the, the format a little bit. Um, so, so that's who's left on the schedule? Mommy. We have uh, Springfield, Northview. Northview. Springfield. Yep, and Mommy, yeah. Springfield, Northview, Mommy. Which uh, – In that order? Is that right? I think so. I Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, away home. What's that? Home away home. Yeah, yeah. So, is this I the mean, last year that we play, mommy? Correct. At home. Ooh. We are done. Mommy. We are done. They they will be looking for a new head coach next year. He uh he's gonna he is that turned to athletic director and 
from all uh, accounts, from all the rumors out there that he'll probably be, he's going to step down and someone else is going to, they're going to look for someone else. <clears throat> Which would be, it's a, it, to me, it's such a hard job. Like that, it, that particular school. Yeah, that school, school you know? district really is. You're completely <laughs> landlocked and. You got to get someone that quits taking, that's good at recruiting and, and because all the good kids go to St. John's. So, yeah. Yeah. Good I, luck. That's a tough job, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I think it was our eighth grade year that Perrysburg was like one and nine going into the Mommy game. And Mommy was really good and Perrysburg beat them. So be anything, careful. Anything can happen. Oh, I know. I know. One that's week at a time. It. One week at a time. Uh, I, if I was if I was a betting man, which I'm, which I'm not, I would put forty on Perry's Brook in that game. Forty thousand? Uh, no, I would give Perry's Brook forty oh, on a points. spread. Oh, okay. All right. Like, or, sorry, let me. I, I'm saying that wrong. Mommy would get <laughs> thirty nine and a half, so Perry's Brook would have to win by forty or more, and I would say probably Perry's Brook's probably going to cover that. I don't know. Mommy's terrible, Jim. Less change. Less change. <laughs> so I'm I'm not being mean. It's, it's it's sad, but it's bad. It's like there's a reason they're leaving the NLL is they can't I did I feel like we might have touched on this before, but I don't think they've competed in anything, like any sport. Like, uh they, they were <clears throat> they've been a really good I don't know how it's been in the past few years, but they've been a good baseball program. Um the past, yeah, the past decade, touch, you know, can't touch Diamond Dave though. <laughs> I'm not saying I think they're the like the best. Much, I'm just saying you said yeah, they couldn't compete in anything. I don't know. Maybe they're good at yeah, tennis. Yeah, you're right. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So is uh, Perry's? Is, is are they based on their offense? Like if, if their offense isn't going, like they're in trouble, or is it pretty even between offense defense? I mean, we do a pretty good job uh, defense-wise also. Um, I think with any it team. It really like, was like, yeah. It was, freak, it was freak plays. Like, if you if you see the highlights, I think if you, like, uh, what is it? BCSN had some of the highlights just on their Twitter feed. And it's like the, the, the running back was completely surrounded. You know, because in, in high school football, it just kind of forms a blob, like, in the middle. And the kid was just like tucked up against his lineman, and then everybody was coming out, and then he literally just pops it for sixty, and then Twice. a couple of missed tackles here and there. So, but yeah, I mean, I I thought the game would, I again. So how's it? How, it how's, how's the, the uh, course, but... how's the playoffs work? Like, so so they they bumped it up to sixteen teams, uh, which in our region. Just because there's not a lot of Division One schools in our region, there's 18 Division One schools, so only two don't make the playoffs. Um, so we are we're number four. So it's like it's just like a you know the NCAA tournament, one play sixteen and and so forth. Who but, who uh, who in the like Northwest Ohio is in that uh, <clears throat> Finley and Whitmer and us, and I think that's it. Is Dude, St. Uh, John's in D one or are they D two now? No, I'm pretty sure they're D two. So, um, yeah, the only schools here are Whitmer, Finley, and us. Everything else is our region goes all the way. It's Columbus and Dayton, part of like north of Dayton, I believe. <clears throat> I think wherever uh, Kettering Fair, whatever Fairmont is, but I think that's like around a little north of Dayton, but. Yeah, so uh, almost almost every school in our region gets in, um, but I mean, we I think we hosted the first time we did it. We hosted a, a playoff game when they first shifted it, and we lost like uh, I think forty one to fourteen or something. Um, but then that's the school we beat last year in the first round of the playoffs at home. So it's the the schools are really good, but even let's see. I think it's funny that right now, if the playoffs started today, we played Finley. We would play Finley again. Um, but the last place team is is two and five. Um, so there's in in a lot of these schools, like we played Dublin Jerome the first game. All they play is Division One schools because that's just they 
that's just their conference, and we just don't have that ability. Now, it'll help us out now when the NLL changes next year because Whitmer and Finley will both be in our league, so we'll play them every year, which is good for computer points, you know. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, shifting gears, though. So uh, our Guardians <laughs> made the playoffs, man. Uh they said it, completely yeah, so I, I was looking like they put out a video that showed like um like uh basically like uh comments and quotes and stuff that people said or where they were projected to to win and I mean most people had them at like not even five hundred or at five hundred maybe uh um, third or fourth in the division in almost every yeah. yeah official poll that I saw yeah. yeah every every writer I don't think anybody expected them to do what they did. And they had 16 people make their major league debut this year. Yes. <laughs> and well, 17 insane. now because Bo Naylor just got called up yesterday. He he threw a missile and got somebody out at second base trying to steal. So yes. Can you and it, you know what's what's crazy to me? And I try I think of it whenever there's siblings that play the same sport. Like it's amazing that you're playing the same sport on different teams. It's even more probable when you're on the same team. The, on the same like, organization. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, it's nuts. <laughs> Uh, so I saw this. I saw this yesterday. So Cleveland has the second best rate for money spent to wins. Yeah. So each win, like according to their payroll, costs them nine hundred thousand dollars. The number one team is the Baltimore Orioles. Their average win costs them just under eight hundred thousand dollars. But, but like that's, that's just the Phillies, city, obviously, right? The yeah. Phillies are in are the worst. Each of their wins is three million dollars. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it's just <laughs> you, you, you know what's crazy to me is I always hear and I see people. This one guy specifically on Twitter, like, but people on Twitter will say how Terry Francona like isn't good or or will use veterans over young guys um more maybe that's why michael martinez was up to bat in the game seven of the world series you know like um but i guess his i mean if that's the case i don't know if it is but if that's the case the, his hand was kind of forced with their team this year because all they had was young guys you know are they although they did uh just designate for assignment brian shaw i think i saw yeah uh, to make room for bone Ayler. but so like having uh kind of like hey you have to uh you have to win games with all these high school players <laughs> it it is crazy um having that many call ups in a year is usually not ideal for competing for a division sure uh yeah to say it nicely uh, again no one expected <clears throat> the the guardians to win the division this year i mean i sure as hell didn't i i s- still to this day i told this to everybody i really thought the white Sox were going to run away with the division i thought detroit might nip on their heels a little bit just because of some of the offseason moves they had and their talent pool that was up and coming was supposed to be far better than the guardians at least as of this year i will say uh torkelson was again he should have been much better this year um but anyway yeah it's kind of crazy um of course me being a cleveland guardians fan or indians fan for all my life i'm already thinking i'm like what is this going to mean for the 40-man roster moving forward because uh they have a lot of a lot of decisions to make on the 40-man roster going into next year so it'll be very interesting because that I don't think they expected some of these guys to progress as quickly as they have. Like mm-hmm. we just talked to Bo Naylor. Bo Naylor, I think, started in uh, high A. He immediately, almost immediately, was promoted to double A, tore it up in double A, triple A. He was hitting for power average, I think. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're here. I mean, scary problem if you will like <laughs> again i i know it's not a bad thing to have too many prospects because obviously not all of them hit uh you know or come come to fruition if you will but it'll be very interesting moving forward um i what think do, uh, what do you guys think they'll do in the playoffs like just 
they're the, to me they're a very frisky i know i will use that word as a they're a frisky team to play and i don't think a lot of people want to play them only because they play small ball the best i've seen in years like they manufacture runs like crazy yeah they so, i i heard um i don't know what manager it was or what team it was but they is it usually when you're playing defense, you can kind of expect what people are going to do. They do these certain things. And if, if someone's on first and they hit it to left field, they're only going to get to second. He said with the Guardians, they go first to third so well. They turn singles into doubles so well. Like you have to, it gets you more anxious in the outfield knowing like, oh, if this ball's over my head, somebody's scoring. Or if this ball's over my head, they're getting to third base, regardless if it's in left field or not. You have yeah. to, you have to play defense, <clears throat> not differently, but, um, like I said, more anxiously because of uh, any little thing, they'll take advantage of it. Now, if we can just speed, uh, speed get, on the base paths, yeah, get uh, Tristan McKenzie to quit giving up home runs, then I think uh, I think we'll be all right. I think they're going to do well. I uh, are you going to try to go to that first round? I thought it's on the weekend. I didn't know it was going to be on a weekend. Maybe. I mean, dude, I looked at tickets and they wanted like. 70 bucks which yeah. isn't too bad but the, the the thing i think the first game is friday, friday friday and you know how they do those like midday starts and i'm like yeah. i can't do a midday I like know. i can't get over there for a midday start and of course they don't they don't announce the game times until you know the playoff series are determined so it's not going to be for another couple days i think right when does the season officially end is it today or the next couple of days I don't no know. i think the middle of the week yeah, so we'll know All maybe two days before. I think the their position their pos- are set, but not the TV schedules. That's well, not the, so like, the order. I don't think the order set either for some of them. No, it's Tampa Bay has clinched. Tampa Bay and Toronto Seattle can, can clinched, still move around. Yankees have clinched. We obviously have clinched in our division. Astros have clinched. We, Seattle I said we. <clears throat> I, yeah, I you are wearing the shirt. Sorry, you are wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah, the it looks like the uh, the last games are the Wednesday or Wednesday. Okay. Um, but and... yeah, that, that always bothered me. Like last couple of years, or it's been a while now that they've been doing it. But they'll they'll do the playoffs starts at like two o'clock in the afternoon, or four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Um. And they'll probably play the Blue Jays, though. Right now, right now they're they're gonna play the Rays because they play the they play the it'd be three six and four five play each other. So the Rays are at number six right now, but all that they're all within three games of each other. Oh, so that's right. yeah. technically, it could change still. I just don't want to put like not that Seattle's great, but just like the travel aspect of it, like yeah back to like so quickly is it is it a uh, home away home uh, it's yes. only three I, games i right? believe so it's only three games or is it home home away i, I don't honestly know. don't know it would make sense uh, for it to it's be gotta like that be home yeah it's got to be home away home um our fan is going crazy right now if you don't know this i will say like i was watching some highlights yesterday and the Mariners, like I just not forgot, but like their jerseys are just cool. <laughs> it's uh, so, I remember as a as a kid, you're just like you, the gritty, that's what you like, look at, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to see them back in it. Yeah, they're on TikTok. They have uh, their announcer is always on TikTok. Like when they he's such a good announcer um he's no tom hamilton but he's uh i just are. like i just like <laughs> i just like when adults get excited about games you know what i mean like like because we're just sitting around doing whatever watching it being angry or being happy or whatever but to know millions of people are listening to you and you're just like this is my this these are my emotions and i'm gonna i'm gonna show that right now you know it's it's exciting <laughs> it gives me goosebumps <laughs> i just hope the astros well. don't i hope the astros lose early yeah, yeah yeah as much as my uncle loves the astros and uh but no one 
they quickly turned into like the Yankees. Like everybody hates them. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what cheating will do. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of cheating, I know this has yes. nothing to do with baseball. Can, yeah, let's segue. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Oh my Dude, god. It's been all over TikTok. Oh, Jim. And... Jim, you got yeah, <sighs> Jim's all right. So Jim's eyes wide open. Do you want to tell the tale or should I okay. so this fishing tournament? I'm not a huge fisherman. I you know Ohio fishing tournament. It's, it's in it's in Lake Erie. Uh, yeah. So the, so the these stage. so <laughs> the first video I saw is just these people getting caught right, and I won't spoil it because I want to go through the whole thing. And I was like, okay, this is this is whatever. Someone got caught, and I didn't even know where it was or whatever. Then I saw the long video of it, and the there's you know how they make a big show of it. You go on, you you put your fish on the scale, they you do weigh, a weigh in like it's yes. a tournament weigh in. <laughs> yes. So so there was yes. an eight. This person was eighteen pounds. This this group was eighteen pounds, whatever. And like, okay, well you got to beat eighteen pounds. These guys go up there, put their fish on. It's 33 pounds of fish. And you're only allowed a certain amount of fish, correct, Tyler? You can't, like, yeah. just catch a bunch take, of fish. Usually it's you take your five, six best. Yeah. I, you know, who knows what that tournament was. I, it looked like in his basket there was at least five or six fish, it yeah. looked like. So um, so right away, fishermen are like. Pre- premise is it's not unheard of to catch a walleye that's 12 plus pounds. So. Yeah. It's completely doable to have 33 pounds of walleye. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, somebody's, some of these fishermen are like, all right, all these guys have been weighing in between 12 and 18 pounds, and these guys come back with 33. Well, whatever, you know. So there's still some people that are, that are, uh, kind of have their ears perked up. And so, so then they hold the fish for their photo. And I think that's when people are like, wait a minute. Because if you fish for your entire life, you can kind of look at a fish and be like, that's so many pounds. So yep. when they saw the fish, I don't know who did it or I don't even know why those guys stuck around. Yeah, they, they but... didn't really paint the backstory of no. what happened, but there was something that must have happened between when they weighed in and like Lorenzo said, they took the picture of the fish because then all of a sudden the video kind of like there's another video yeah. and all of a sudden they're cutting open like cutting, the fish. cutting the fish open, finding big ass weights in Huge the fish. Weights. We're Wrapped. talking like four ounce lead weights. Yes. Huge weights. For... They were wrapped in fish fillets. Uh, stuffed yes, in they these shoved fish. fish fillets into <laughs> the fish's bellies to add weight. So they obviously cut probably small walleye, like or caught, caught small walleye where they were fishing for the big ones. Just literally cut them up on site and shove the the fillets, like you know, the side fillets of those fish into the bigger fish to add weight. Oh, dude! But, and dude, it was crazy. It was, uh, it was and, like everyone's going nuts. They're cussing at him, and the whole time that his fish are getting uh, cut open, he's the guy's just standing there. I don't know where his partner went, but the guy's just standing there, like seeing his fish because, get cut yeah, open because he got caught. Like yeah. he got big time but caught. Wouldn't, wouldn't the fish be cut open when they stuff the weights in it? No, I think they stuffed them the down their mouths. They're just shoving it down their mouths. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. And you can do, you can force a bunch of stuff into a fish's mouth because it's. Oh, that sounded weird, Ty. <laughs> well, it's true. Uh, you, you say whatever you want, but it's true. Uh, I mean, I've seen the, I've, the, someone, the put someone put a cucumber down there one time. Someone put a someone put a carrot down there. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. So. If you are a fisherman, which Jim is not, so I'll pick on Jim, a fish can literally swallow an entire hook and it goes straight into their belly. Like, and that's not unheard of. Like, if if a fish like is that hungry, they won't even hook the hook in the mouth. They will literally go down to their belly. And when you catch a fish like that, usually you have to keep it, especially because it's going to kill the fish usually if they have a hook in their belly. So anyway. Yeah, yeah it, you was, can, it was so funny. They shoved, yeah, for like four, five, six ounces. So when was this? This was Just, Thursday, I yeah. think, because all the videos started coming out Friday or Saturday. Yeah. So I think it was just within the last couple of days, and it was crazy. And then people are saying, like, the, these guys are professional fishermen. How how long have they been doing this? <laughs> yeah, which it, there was there were guys in the audience that were saying, like, you've been cheating like this for years. So clearly they must have thought, they've been doing this for years um and like to lorenzo's point like you can definitely tell the difference of like a five six pound walleye to like a 12 pound walleye uh it's 
Massive. I also like that they were shoving fish fish fillet down, yeah. like with the with the weight, like inside of fish fillet. Like, <laughs> here, fish, eat this fish. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it was it, it was messed up. But yeah, I was. We'll have to send me that video. I I haven't seen it. Oh no! Oh my gosh, it's been everywhere. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah I mean, too. these guys are pissed because like they're there's not tons of money in fishing tournaments, you know, like, but obviously there's enough where these guys were getting furious and you could tell like there, cause they had like, they had uh, like, you know, long sleeve uh, like stuff on and they were sponsored by people. Like they had their bat, their name on the back and like they were sponsored and you know, there's guys got, you know, an audience. He's like, you've won hundreds of thousands of dollars or thousands of dollars. You have a boat. And all these guys are like, call the cops. This is fucking robbery. Like it was, it was crazy. That's that's nuts, man. Yeah, it was very also crazy. just the balls to be like, "Hey, all these other fish are coming in around this way. Let's let's three exit." Yeah, they. I think that's that's three for exit. Sure what did it? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. What what did it? Because you'll get big fish in this in the spring, like when they're spawning, because like the females you have tons of eggs in their bellies. But at this point of the year, the fish are not as big. Like they're much skinnier i'll say so yeah i just picture like Very interesting video a couple dudes around a campfire be like dude i got this genius idea of how we can win some fishing tournaments let's just go to Mc- mcdonald's let's get some fish fillet we'll catch a couple walleye jam weights down there the inside of them and then we'll win it all I, I was looking for a video and i just saw that it says they were the they won this last year this tournament yeah, and that's why everybody's pissed. The state now they have been man. for years. Some things. Just... They're, the, they're the Houston Astros of fishing. Yeah. They're, they're bringing it all back. They're just... <laughs> when you think things are sacred, you know, it's just... If you can't trust fishermen, like, who, who, who do you trust? Who, who do you trust? No one. Man. Man. <laughs> that's That's sad. Just for America and, and everything. It's, uh, man. First baseball and now I'm fishermen. It's, uh, when you can't trust fishermen. Uh, I have the video. If you want me to play it, I can play it. Um, I don't know how well it'll work here. I can, let me, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me figure this out. Get a live reaction. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't know if it'll get if it'll get a, get us kicked off YouTube, but it doesn't matter because we get the four views of video anyway. So what does it matter? Uh, YouTube. <laughs> sure. All right. Can you guys see my screen? No. You can't. It says it started sharing. But nothing it, happened. I don't see the video. Maybe it's blocked. Uh, no. There it goes. Oh wait, there it goes. It says I. No, it shows right. you're sharing the screen. All right. Oh, the video doesn't want to play though. I wanted to live react to this. Let's see. <laughs> There's an ad. <laughs> on a smolder here. All right. I got to get out of that. <laughs> it's a good- look it up. Look it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll look that up. <laughs> Tune in next week or next time. <laughs> For Jim's, reaction. Uh, Jim's reaction. My reaction. Oh my God. It's. Oh my God. I got to. I gotta see if I can get it to share because they're oh loud my in my ears. These let's, see. Are so pissed. let's see, let's see. Let's see. Uh I can cut some of this out too if I have to. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, technology. Let me know when you guys can see it. Because it took a while last time. It's loading. Or it's just sitting there. Hold on. Old. Jim, are okay. you eating? No, I'm coughing. Oh, uh, oh, that's right. You have that dry cough. Can you guys see it? Yeah. All right. Let's see what happens here. I can't hear anything. There you go. There. I still you can't share. You got to share your computer sound. It's not working. You can't hear anything. Here, you want me to try to do it? That's the, 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 the being able to hear. It's the best part. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can get it to play on mine. Um, Jim, you're not. Are you? Is you just have a cough, or you're not feeling well at all? Yeah. So I I tested negative for COVID. That's good, um, especially with us here on the podcast. We could have caught yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I definitely have a, I have a man cold, so thoughts and prayers. Um, 
Yeah. So it's uh it's been a rough it's been a rough three days. Um a lot of coughing, a lot of coughing, dry cough, um, nothing pounded at almost all the mucinex. Uh went to C V S, got that, that did absolutely nothing. So now I am on um some Ricola cough drops and uh some Tylenol cold and flu pills. Yeah. Seem to be doing absolutely nothing for me as well. So They're beautiful. Uh, I I put a little Vix on the chest today though. Yeah. To try to like break it up. We'll I'll keep you guys posted. But next time. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot. We have a lot. I, I had to make some reminders. We have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> all right. We won't worry about it. That's all right. We tried. I did uh, type in walleye cheaty cheaters busted, and there is. Uh, Hold shit. on, I think I got it. Let me, let me, try this. Let me of, share my sound. A large amount of videos of people getting busted. All right, ready? 422,000 yeah. views. Oh, you got it. There. Yeah. You piece of shit. You piece of shit. <laughs> He needs to be arrested. He needs to be prosecuted. Call the cops. Listen to me right now. Everybody listen to me right now. Jake, I want you to leave. I don't want anybody to touch these guys. I want you to leave. He needs to go to jail. He needs to go to jail. Stop. Stop. You fucking Dude, oh, here's a watch cut him up. cut this fish open though. Look at this. Watch this fish. Yeah. So he's cutting the belly open. Jason, we got a Look at his weight. Look at his weight. Look at his weight. It's like his a weight chicken egg. Fucking huge. They right. They're just like, oh, let me cut right here. I don't. I don't know what caused them to. Maybe somebody felt something in the fish or something. I don't know. There's two weights in that one. Right here. Right. Look at this. This is a filet, yeah. A filet. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He needs to go to jail. He needs to go to jail. Is this the guy right here? In the yes, he's just standing there. Yes. He just sta yeah, he his last I think his name is Jake Runyon. I, I looked it up, but dude, it's crazy. That like, allegedly the, you could tell like the crowd it, like they want blood. <laughs> they, want, they want to kill this dude. Well yeah, dude. They didn't get enough like January 6th, so they were like, all right, this is Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's so good. I feel like you've been sitting on that line, just waiting for that. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was gonna work it in there, but boom, got it. How, how many times have you used it? Like you're watching these guys fight about cornhole. You're like, they didn't get enough January six. Where's my bush apple? God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, Speaking of January sixth, do you know? <laughs> Circle it. Where are we Circle going? It? Where are we Land going? It. Land it. Land it. All right, ready. So the local, the local uh, House of Representatives seat. Okay, you okay. follow me. So it, her name is Marcy Captor. She's been in politics. I, I'm pretty sure as long as we've probably all been alive, yeah, and she's yeah, yeah. held the seat in northwest ohio specifically like in the lucas county whatever district that is for i think 30 years she's one of the longest standing house people like in the house so anyway it's interesting because recently like i was at my mom and dad's house and somebody knocked on the door when i was there and they were campaigning for marcy captor and i was like huh that's interesting so i like looked it up well recently they redrew the lines to include northern wood county because it historically votes Republican and the like Ohio House is now controlled by Republicans. So of course they read the lines to try yeah. and try and benefit themselves. Well anyway, the person running against Marcy Cap there is a dude named J.R. Majewski, yeah. I think is his yeah. name. J.R. Majewski was at the January 6th riots, Jim. <laughs> yes. He, he this also is why uh... politics is fucked is he, because the dude that was at the january 6th like riots can run for office he also That's uh not stop falsely stated his uh oh is that the military, military guy? record yes, yeah same guy yeah. same guy yeah he said he was in afghanistan and they somebody finally fact checked it and they're like 
uh, you were in Turkey. Loaded you were planes stationed or something. Cargo. Yeah, you were yeah. you were at an a U.S. air base in Turkey, which yeah. it's like, you know, the U.S. air base. You're not even I'll in the country. Just, you're just it's like a U.S. air base. Like you're completely I, surrounded by America I been, anyway. I haven't been following it, but like. He's not gonna win, is he? I hope I to God know. not. I don't, I, I don't trust me. I don't like people that are career politicians as far as like so long because I think Captor's almost eighty now. So I'm like, maybe it's time that you do, you know, like. But I, I think I'm gonna vote for Captor because I can't vote for somebody that was at the fucking riots. I'm sorry, Alleg- allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was there. <laughs> I'm just he 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 fake videos. It. Oh my God, he admitted it. <laughs> what? Dude, have you seen deep videos? videos? Dude, it's bad, dude. It's so bad. I just immediately thought to myself, I'm like, this is the Republican candidate that you're going to let the people vote for is somebody that was at the riots. Like, this is the best person that you can put on the ballot. To so, be fair, anyway. to be fair, I think that came out after their primary. So maybe if we want to give the benefit of the doubt, maybe, uh, but I will not. <laughs> so maybe they might like him more. So <laughs> I don't know. I know we usually don't touch on politics you did, uh, on this podcast, but we had to go there. You did land that, though, stuff. Jim. I think yeah. he landed it. Dude, yeah. just it, a little turbulent, but we, we got there. No, we got no there. turbulence at all. That was smooth landing all the way down, dude. <laughs> it, it started with someone coming to my parents' door, and I'm like, all right, someone's going to be like, get the f- out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't vote for your kind. No. <laughs> No, they took our dams. <laughs> they took our gym. <laughs> Can I tell you uh, real quick? We're almost done here, but whenever I hear someone say they took our jobs, it reminds me of the South Park episode. Oh yeah, but oh, that's not. That. But that's not even the best part of that episode. <laughs> the best part <laughs> is when they figure out all these future people won't exist. Is if they all turn gay, so they just have a big pile of men. So then, like they're like they took our job back to the pile, and it's just a bunch <laughs> of dudes together. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Good All times. Right. Well, we were everywhere, and uh, this is this has been a great nerdball podcast. A little podcast, sprinkle guys. of everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This you is guys awesome. want to touch on religion? Should we? T- circle <laughs> we did that up? last time on the dad podcast. Oh, we did. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. my hand slapped. You because did. of the episode, uh, my wife was like, "Do you think that's smart?" It's like <laughs> they listen, they listen. <laughs> Do you think that's smart? Well, I mean, well, maybe I, I, that, that yeah. would boost our our listenership at least one or two, so <laughs> might help. Well, I had to text her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to make some changes, but we're good. We're good. Um, uh, Wait, George, did, I, the podcast was edited. No, not the podcast. Was it I, I did not. I did not do that. I was just no, like, no. "Hey, the script." Because the thing uh, we could talk about this episode. Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, we were trying to make it, guys. We need to all support one another and make sure this is on all of our social media, Jim. Okay, I, I supported I'll, I'll tag Jim. you after this. Don't worry. I supported Jim and and helped him out. Um, I did text George because I had two. I was looking at my the statistics for our, the podcast. I had two good days in a row. Like it's it's weird to to have. Usually it's like the day I put an episode out is when I get a bunch of downloads. But this was the day before an episode, and then the day one came out. And George goes, "It's probably all of uh, it's probably Jim's in laws just rewatching the video, <laughs> <laughs> just telling everybody to watch it. Like, can you believe this guy?" Uh, I enjoyed it and I appreciate you being so open and forthcoming. <coughs> Divorced Tyler over here doesn't say anything about anything. Nope. Tight lipped. <laughs> he learns. <laughs> Tight lipped. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for joining me on the Nerdball podcast. Uh, this was great and uh, we'll be coming at you. I don't know. Oh, we got to figure out the 16th, but uh, hopefully the 16th. If not, we'll move it around and get another dad draft out there. So, uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for checking out this episode of the Nerdball Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're hearing this on any of the podcatchers on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. We're kind of coming at you two times a week now, audio and video. Check us out on all the social medias. Just search the Nerdball Podcast. 
on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're out there. Uh, Gmail is the nerdball podcast at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us an email, we'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks to Real JP Multimedia, Cuttlefish Graphics, Perrysburg Junior High STEM Lab, and Big Daddy Graphics for helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.